Hey, it's Tyler with Lowbrow Customs. Today we're gonna to install these narrow rabbit ear handlebars by Lowbrow Customs on this 1994 1200 cc Sportster. The handlebars we'll be installing today are the Lowbrow Customs narrow chrome dimpled rabbit ears. However, we also have these available in black. Another option is stainless steel. We have a all hand TIG welded stainless steel version available, as well as smooth. The dimpled is to use stock Harley Davidson hand controls. And we also have a standard width where the bars are splayed slightly wider out. Uh, the install is gonna be exactly the same on any of those fits or finishes. Let's do it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the stock gauge cluster. Now on this model, the speedometer and tachometer are mounted to the top riser clamp with this bracket. Because we're gonna be installing some riserless handlebars, uh, we won't be able to mount that in the same place anymore. So you either need to eliminate your gauges or relocate them. Uh, one option is the speedometer gauge mount by Lowbrow Customs. We have it in polished and black for one inch and one and a quarter inch diameter bars. And that actually mounts to the, the vertical uprights of your handlebar and allows you to mount your gauge at whatever height you want. So it's a really uh, simple and effective way to keep your speedometer. Removing the gauge cluster is very easy. We're simply going to remove the two socket head Allens that are also part of your top clamp riser assembly. And for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop these down out of the way and leave them, leave the cables attached. Got a little spacer in there. After loosening this gauge cluster, uh, I took a look and decided I'm gonna quickly remove the eyebrow. That'll drop the headlight down and allow me to get the gauge cluster further out of the way. And then also, you may, sometimes uh, you might need to loosen the eyebrow or the headlight itself just to give enough clearance to get a wrench or socket onto the riser nuts on the riser bolts. And I often find in mechanical endeavors that uh, instead of trying to work around things, it's often <laughs> less frustrating and faster to spend the small amount of extra time to remove components just to make your life a little easier. Okay. All right, so the gauges are loose. And what I'm gonna do is actually just carefully, there we go, undo the stock connector. Now I can just go ahead and put these down low. I'm just gonna let them hang. And that allows me much more working room here around the handlebars. All right, I'm gonna remove the hand controls and I'm going to also remove the, uh, the turn signals for now in the mirrors just to drop them down out of the way. <clears throat> Going to custom handlebars, uh, I would absolutely end up personally swapping out to smaller turn signals or deleting them, but uh, swapping them out, you can go to a fork tube mounted uh, clamp with smaller turn signals, and it really just cleans up the look of your bars instead of all this stuff. And in regards to mirrors, Lowbrow Customs has a wide array, round, square, heart-shaped, black, chrome, all sorts of different style mirrors that are much more low profile and look great on your bike. So be sure to check those out. Use a 5 8 inch wrench here. And on this side, the mirror actually stem threads into the turn signal. So they come off at the same time. And the stock wiring is held in place with some little clips that simply pull out of holes in the, uh, that are drilled in the stock handlebars. Just let that guy hang for now. Okay, now the turn signal's out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and move, get rid of the, uh, the right hand control cluster, throttle and switches. This is an eighth inch Allen key. I can go ahead and uh, loosen these up. Get 
And then this one is a 532nd Allen for the brake lever. There's that clamp. And that frees that up. We've got a hard line on here, so I want to be a little careful with where we put that. We can slide the throttle. Just free the end of the bars. That cleans up that side. Now onto the clutch side. All right, back to our 532nd Allen. Use an Allen key. Pour one on a ratchet. Loosen these up. Our clutch lever clamp. And then there is a, there's actually two eighth inch little Allen bolts, except on this motorcycle, one of them is missing on this side. So there's just one. One to remove in this case. Finish removing this hardware. Oops. Carefully let the lever go to the ground. And the other side of the switch housing and the stock grip is still glued in place. You can, if you're not using the stock grips, you can actually slice through with carefully with a razor blade and simply peel it off. Or uh, sometimes, now these are glued on pretty good, that's, that's what I would do is slice them with a razor blade. But uh, if they're softer rubber grips, you can take the, air, the blow off tool, air nozzle from your air compressor, stick it in there and give it full air while you slide it off and it typically pops right off. Before we remove the top clamp and get the bars out of the way, uh, I'm going to go ahead and loosen the, the nuts here that are on the end of the riser bolts. They're three quarter inch. And we actually already pre-loosened these. Can be a little bit of a knuckle buster if they haven't been loosened in a long time and they break free. But if you remove your bars and risers and then go to, or, or try to loosen those before your bars are in, it can be a little tougher. So now that I know these are relatively loose. We'll go ahead and undo the top clamp, which is held on in this case by two bolts. Be careful because uh, your bars will flop down at this point. It's actually really good practice. I know it's what Todd would do if he were here right now is put a rag over the gas tank, but I'm being lazy about it. There we go. Top clamp. Hardware, old bars. Got a three quarter inch socket on my ratchet, which I can fit in here now that I remove the headlight and eyebrow out of the way. So I'll just hold the, the riser base until it gets loose enough that I can unthread it. This, on this model, this riser base has a stud that's threaded into the lower riser. So that whole unit pulls out. There's a little cup that goes over the rubber on the bottom and the nut. And this side, I'm gonna actually sneak a three quarter inch box end wrench in and just use my hand, make it a little faster to unthread the nut because the, uh, the hard line on that side is in the way to get the ratchet in there. Whoops. One thing I wanted to mention on this 1994 1200 Sportster, it has this style mounting stud where it's basically a double headed stud and the, what I would call the spacer is integrated. This is one piece of hardware. On most bikes, you'll find this style. Uh, the, the rubber top hats are the same for both styles, but as you can see, this has a, just a regular old bolt in there and a sleeve and 
since I have this stuff lying around, what I'm gonna do for ease is I'm gonna actually use this bolt, these caps, and that sleeve on this install. Uh, if you have this style, you can see these flats milled here, you could carefully, say, clamp that riser in a vise with soft jaws, put a wrench on here, unthread the stud, thread that stud into your bars, and use this stock style setup. Um, another option is these are Lowbrow Customs solid riser bushings. These are machine solid aluminum, black anodized. These accept a socket, a cap head, uh, socket head Allen bolt, um, which recesses in there for a clean look. One thing you always wanna make sure is any riser bolts or hardware you use, you really wanna use grade eight uh, just to be safe because they're holding your handlebars to your bike and you do not want them to shear. So before you bolt your handlebars in place, uh, I just held them here and checked and it'll be a hard uh, to get those cables, you know, freed up enough to fit over the bar. You could route this instead of around the fork tube, you could bring it to the outside and it, it would definitely free up some slack. But this is another thing you can try is simply sliding it home first and there's, that's plenty of room for your cable. So I went ahead and just slid the throttle control in place and I'm gonna go ahead and don't wanna forget my little top cup here that goes on top of the rubber bushings. Put those in place. And get this bolt started. See if I can sneak this ratchet back in and tighten them up. Okay, our bars are now in place on their stock rubber bushings, and I'm going to go ahead and put the hand controls back in place. It's gonna be uh, exactly the opposite process of when we took them apart. All right, now this throttle assembly is in place, loosely slid over the bar. This little switch right here, I'm depressing with my thumb, that is your, your brake light switch, and that engages with this little guy here, so when you pull in your brake lever, it allows that switch to come out, which turns on your brake light. So you can also see here very clearly the dimple in dimpled handlebars. The whole purpose is to allow for the stock hand control for the wiring to have somewhere to go. So you wanna make sure your wiring's lined up with that divot. And before you fully tighten this throttle uh, housing assembly, you want to uh, get this engaged lined up in here. Once you have this lined up, you're gonna go ahead and install the clamp for your handlebar master cylinder here for your front brake. And before I snug everything up, I'm just gonna wiggle it around, make sure that it's all engaged properly. That's one side done, onto the other.
onto the clutch side. We'll go ahead and get our little switch pod. Someone in place, you've got the dimple here, again, that the stock wiring sits in. Our eighth inch Allen. I'm not gonna snug it up at this point, but I am just going to get it mostly together there so I can move it around. Bring the clutch lever back up. Rotating it so the wiring seats into that dimple. making sure the levers look pretty even as far as the rotation on the bars. The dimple does a pretty good job of locating those. Okay, that basically wraps up the main part of this project. Our hand controls are in place and operational, just like they were before. This is something you could do in your home garage in just a couple hours on a lazy afternoon, really change the look, feel, styling, and handling of your motorcycle. Other things that you might want to, uh, to do at the same time uh, is potentially swap your grips. Lowbrow Customs has many, many, many styles, colors of different grips that are inexpensive and fun to, to change out. Uh, you can also check out our control levers, affordable and uh, nice, clean styled brake and clutch levers. There's some general cleaning up to do here. You know, you can zip tie your wiring, um, tweak your brake lines and such to make them flow a little better and be tucked out of the wind. And uh, the main other thing I would do is plan on relocating those turn signals. Ideally, in my mind, getting some smaller ones, probably doing a fork tube mount or even a small frame mount for them and relocating the speedometer and probably just eliminating the tachometer. Uh, and that will tidy up your bike, make it look way different than stock. And it's all uh, fun and uh, easy project to, to handle on your own. If you've got any questions, Comment below, like this video, let us know. We'll get back to you or reach out uh, at lowbrowcustoms.com. We are here to answer any motorcycle technical questions you might have. Thanks for watching.